I did already hand hygiene. She listened to my patient's lungs. All right, if we need to use half strength hydrogen peroxide, do you guys know how to do the half strength of something? 50, 50, 50. Yeah, I'll show you guys how to do that today just to give you an extra information. Okay, when you're doing trach here, it's a good idea to have your PPE on, including your face shields. I may not put this on just so you guys can hear me better, but you'd have a face shield on to protect you um, because this patient may be coughing, there may be sputum or uh, mucus coming out. So um, you want to have that. Okay. And then I'm just putting it on the table. I'm going to take out the old dressing. So I'm just going to move this, throw that away, and then I'm going to change out my gloves. Wash my hands. Let my table dry. All right, Bill. I'm getting ready to do your trait care. If you need something, just wiggle your left hand for me so you know that you need my attention. Okay. So I'm gonna. What am I looking at at my package? Expiration date. Expiration date. It's got all the contents that I need. So I'm gonna need some. Saline. So you guys got it with the hydrogen peroxide, and then um, so, um, and then also to make sure that it's an intact package. So we're opening up our package. The cable is dry. You can throw this in the trash. And then when you're opening your package, we always open away from us first, and then to the sides. to kind of rotate my set up so that I can get my gloves and have the space over here. Get those open. I am going to use both of these solutions. So I'm just going to pair them. <laughs> so I'm pouring some off. And that's actually real hydrogen peroxide. I don't know if it's expired. I don't know that I want that on the mannequins, but I'll show you. Okay, when we're doing this procedure, we're going to have one clean hand and one sterile hand. So if you put both of your gloves on, just pour with your non dominant hand. So otherwise, what you can do is you can put one glove on on your non-dominant hand, prepare everything, and then pour your solution with your dominant hand that's bare, and then put your other glove on. So there's kind of, you can go either way with that. So I'm going to show you how to put it on just one glove. And when you're putting your gloves on, have your hand going up, because otherwise you might touch the border of your paper, which is not sterile. So now when we're doing, I have different kinds of kits. So this particular kit has multiple little bins in it. I think yours has three separate containers. There's an extra sterile drape, which you can lay that out. I just use my paper and that's acceptable or you can use this instead. I'm just gonna get rid of that. Just taking out my supplies. Okay, and then I'm going to pour my solution. So in that back one, I'm going to put that as my half strength hydrogen peroxide and saline. So I'm looking at my solution. I've already poured it off. I've checked the expiration date. Gonna pour it. Okay. 
And I'm also going to pour it on the side. So this is going to be only saline. Again, I'm looking at my label. And then I'm going to get my hydrogen peroxide, verifying my solution. And the color of the solution, they're both clear. Can you guys see how far it is in there? Like, can you see the line on the side at all? Mm -hmm. So then you want to just add that much more. Okay, so now that's half strength. Verifying it again. Hydrogen peroxide tends to be in a dark bottle. Okay, so now I've got my solutions ready. This is my half strength. This is my only saline. Then I've got my equipment ready. So now I'm going to put my other glove on. Go in the inside of the cuff and pull it down. How are you doing over here, Bill? Okay, I'm just going to take out your trach, your inner cannula, clean it out for you, clean your surrounding skin, and then we'll get your dressing reapplied and switch out your ties. Okay, so this is my hand I'm going to keep sterile. This is my hand that can be clean. So this clean hand can touch the outside here. So this particular style just twists and then pulls out. And we don't want to take a lot of time to do this process because if they're coughing secretions, we don't want those secretions to be in that cannula. We want them to be in this one. So if there's excessive secretions that we want to use um, the half strength hydrogen peroxide, that's when we would do that. I don't want to get this in my mannequin, so I'm just going to clean out. So I'm still only holding the outside part of the cannula and not touching this section of the cannula. I want to keep that as sterile as possible. So we're going to just clean inside. Do that. The outside. And I would discard this. And I'm going to use pipe cleaner just to help dry it out. Discard that one. Then the excess. And then when we put it in, we want to have that arc like this. So we just place it and then it locks into place and that's done. Now we want to look at the surrounding skin around that stoma check and see what the integrity looks like. If it looks like there's crusty secretions on there, then I can use my hydrogen peroxide and clean that skin, um, unless it looks like what? What color? If it's red or looks irritated, then we don't want to use the hydrogen peroxide solution, and we would only use the saline solution. Okay. And then when you're cleaning, I kind of like, go close to that stoma and then just kind of go further away from it. So I start at the bottom and then you do a different um, applicator for the top. So this is my clean hand. I'm just going to move this slightly so I can get underneath, go right along that stoma and then coming out. Discard this. Now I'm going to get another one. Get some saline on there. And now I'm going to go from the top. Okay. And then this can get thrown away. And then if it's needing to be a little more, I could use my gauze and get that wet and clean. Um, but if it looks like you did an okay job with your uh, contact applicators, it can be just enough. So you can use your gauze to dry it. Dry there. Throw that away. This one. 
pat that dry, throw that away. And now we want to keep the ties on because I'm by myself. I'm going to put the next the split gauze in place. And we never want to cut gauze because those little fibers could get into the tray. So we always use split gauze. If you don't have split gauze, a workaround could be to take two of these folded and put that next to it until you can get some gauze. But using that split gauze, and you don't want to touch this section here. So you do need to use two hands, but just fold that outside. And then we should have another set of tool ties in our kit. So for these, you want to make sure that their skin integrity looks okay around their neck. Because sometimes these get wet too, and then they also can grow. So you also want to just look at their tissue on their neck. Make sure that's looking okay. And I'm just going to look at your neck here. And when I'm on this side of my patient, I'm going to start with my twill tie on the opposite side and just push it through. And then just kind of line it up so they're flat together. It's, so they're flat. You're going around the back of the patient. And then you take the bottom of the two and you pull it up toward yourself. Your sick. Ideally, this would be a slip knot. His eyes are not long enough to really do an actual slip knot. I have to look nice and through and through there, but not too short. Do you guys know how to do a slip knot? Mm -hmm. If you don't, I'll show you. So then when you secure it, you want to have it tight enough that it depends on the size of your fingers, but one to two fingers. I've got smaller fingers, so if I get two, that's okay. If someone's got really large fingers, then two would be two loose. And then I want to take the old one and just untie it. And why do I wait until after I'm done to untie that second one? Yeah, because they could cough it out. So it's a safety issue. Okay, so now I've got everything good. Um, the patient tolerated it well. I could check his oxygen levels. Um, Bill, how are you feeling? Maybe he's giving me a thumbs up. Then just retie the back of the gown. I got his pillow back. Lower the bed. Raise that up. Um, anything you guys have questions about?